Let's get our game published to App Lab. If you don't know what App Lab is, it's actually an offering from Meta itself that allows you to publish games kind of like on SideQuest, and App Lab games are even on SideQuest. The only difference is the App Lab games can also be downloaded using the Oculus application on your phone. Kicking things off, let's make sure we have the right modules installed. Here I have this version of Unity. So I'm gonna come over to installs. I'm gonna click this cog here, add modules. You just wanna make sure you have the Android build support, open JDK, and also Android SDK and NDK tools. With that, let's open up the project and check a few more things. I am a bit paranoid, so I always like to make sure my controller settings are correct. So I go to project settings, come down here. I'm using OpenXR, so I like to go over to the Android tab and make sure I'm using OpenXR. Come over here and also make sure I have the Oculus Touch controller profile. A few things you might want to consider when publishing if you come over to player. If you come down here, we can also customize our icons, our resolution, and this is the splash screen. So if you want to have a virtual splash screen, you know, kind of like when Mighty Coconut loads up when you're playing a mini golf, well, that's where you put that splash screen right there. Now, a few things we really want to make sure we have since we're publishing specifically to Meta slash Oculus, we're going to set this to linear. I'm going to use OpenGL ES3. We'll also come down here. Yes, multi-threaded rendering, static batching. Yes, yes, yes. And then come down here even further. I want to make sure that I'm using at least Android 10. Set this to automatic. And then we want scripting backend to be IL2CPP. Now I'll point out the version numbers here as well. So you can see here, I am up to version five doing all these tutorials. And so whenever you upload a new thing to the app lab, you're going to have to increase this bundle version code and also this version code. That way, App Lab knows that this is a totally different thing you're uploading. It will deny it if you do not update that. Another thing we need to make sure we're adding is the key store. So if we scroll down even further, publishing settings, this is the key store manager. If you do not have a key store, you can just click here and then go to create new and put it in a dedicated location. Now you wanna make sure you do not lose this. So put this in a safe spot. I've already made one, so I'm not going to create another one, but you would just save this to a file that you know you're not going to lose or delete and even consider backing up actually definitely consider backing up once you've done that you would come back here and you would type in this information your alias i'm a shrimp that's my name type in your password do not forget the password either and then once you've filled out all this information you click add key and that would add it to your project now if you've already created a key store you could just go to browse like i have and i have not put mine in the best location let's see i think i just put it on my desktop tutorial keys and i would select it here and I would add it to the project. I've already entered my password here. And so that will allow me to build. Every time you build, if you do not have your password and key store, it will block you. Just as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And then later when I go to build it, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna exit out of here. One thing we'll actually need to add before we're allowed to submit to the App Lab or Oculus App Lab is the Oculus integration. Or more specifically, we need its capability to create a store-friendly Android manifest. So if we go to package manager and if we go over to my assets, if you haven't already added this to your assets, you can simply go to the website for Unity and go to the asset store and you'll see here that it's free. You just add this to your account and hop back here. And when you look it up, Oculus integration, this will pop up and you'll probably have to download it and you click import. Now I've done this a few times, so it probably won't pop up for me, but it might ask you to restart Unity Hub and update a few things and just click yes, yes, update, da 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 da. Uh, and then that should be imported. Oh, and here's an example. See, it's asking if it should update one of these plugins. I'll say upgrade, and then it's going to ask me restart. And so you'll see now it's imported. I should be good, but you know, I'm getting this little warning here that I'm going to check out. It says go to edit project settings and Oculus for more information. I'm going to check that and you'll see that I have this red one here. Oculus must be added to the XR plugin active loader. So I'm going to just click fix and that should fix it. You'll notice here they actually have some pretty cool things, little warnings that say like you shouldn't do this. So my project actually stopped working and it was because I did not use the Oculus XR and I was using Unity's OpenXR as I pointed out at the beginning of the video down here, right here, OpenXR. So if we come back here and we click fix, it should allow us to work again, but 
Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't let you use Unity's OpenXR. It's kind of funny. Now, once that's been fixed, if you come over to XR plugin, you'll see it just swapped this to Oculus. And also on the PC side, it switched to Oculus. And if we click here, yep, you can see, well, it's all Oculus now. So there that is. And we'll come back here to Oculus and generate our Android manifest. And you'll see here an Android manifest file is required. And I could click apply here and it should generate it. But where is it? And you'll see it right here. This is the Android manifest and I actually have two of them. So with the Android manifest here and set to go, let's get to building. I'm gonna clear this out make sure I know what new errors come through. And if we go to build settings, you wanna make sure that you're switched over to the Android side. Again, if you're not on it, you'll see switch platform when you click here. And also just make sure you have all the scenes that you want in your game here. If you have a title screen, you wanna make it sure it's at position at zero. So you could drag and drop this. There we go. There we go. Uh, but right, I'm going to go to build. And if we come over here, I'm going to go back to build Android builds. And then you'll see I have an app lab build folder. And I already have one here because I've been doing this tutorial a few times, but I'm going to make a new one. Yes, I'm going to replace it. I don't have my password. To fix that, if you ever run into that error, you just come back over here. I think you'll remember the key stores are gonna hide under player settings. Scroll here, here's the key store manager. And then I am going to select my key store. I put it somewhere not good. Don't follow that example. There we go, so I've selected it. I'm gonna type in my password now. All right, let's see if it works now. And there you go. So if you're ever having that password error, it just means that you have a key store associated with the project and you need to make sure you're linking up both the key store and using the right password. Once our build is complete, we'll need the MetaQuest Developer Hub to upload it. And I'll make sure to put this in the description below. You just download this and once it's installed, we will be greeted with this. And this is the MetaQuest Developer Hub. This is a nice little hub for us to use to test different things with our device, see new news. But right now we are creating a new app. So if we go to app distribution and create new app, it's gonna tell us to go to the Manager Developer Center. So if we click that, it opens up this web page, and you might see something like this, like create new app, it's probably going to ask you to log in if you're not logged in. But one thing that's changed is if we click verification, you'll see here that actually starting just at the end of last month, May 31st, we have to verify in one of these ways. So simply choose which one best applies to you. If you have a business, submit the information. If you have a driver's license, just go with that. Otherwise, it's not going to let us submit a game to App Lab. I'm going to let you do this on your own. I'm assuming you know how to fill these kind of things out. And I'm going to move on to creating a new app. After you've been verified, it can take up to two days. But once you're done with that, you come over here, we can type in whatever our name is. And then we're gonna either choose which one we're applying to. I'm gonna say App Lab. And we can see here we have quite a few things to look over if you want to have different versions and test things out. This is kind of going to be your hub for that. If we click here, you'll see that it has no build, so we can upload a new build. And as you can see, the web upload has been deprecated, so we can no longer upload here. The only way we can upload now is through the Meta Developer Hub. So why they deprecated this, I don't know, but I guess we're going to go back to the hub. Coming back to the hub, if we we click on create a new app again it just tells you to go to the manage developer center so you have to create the app on the website but you can't upload it there you have to upload it here and you'll see that the vr sickness lab is now ready to upload here it seems a little tedious and it is but that's what we're working with so let's go for it now here we have a few options we have production we have rc beta and alpha if you wanted to just test things out and send invite codes out to testers you could upload to alpha and my understanding is that won't actually have to go through the process of being reviewed by meta so it could take a few minutes maybe hours uh, but the production one that's the one that will take a few weeks for meta to go over and say okay we'll let your app on app lab and well i'm just gonna upload it to production because well why not so to upload i'm just going to click upload here click this and i've already saved the path to my apk file and i'm gonna click open hit next and here it gives you a bit of information this is going to be the app id release options where your apk is coming from you can type in some notes here about this launch hit next we also have a bunch of optional things that we can add here but i'll let you read through those if you'd like and hit upload and now it is uploading all right and once it has successfully uploaded you'll see that it comes up here you might have to refresh 
refresh this page just by clicking off it, but it's not finished yet. We're actually not active on the App Lab. It takes a few weeks again for it to properly upload. And let me pop this up and show you what I'm talking about. Now you'll see that the tests are completed here. It might take a few minutes when you first submit and it says it's running some tests here. And you'll see submission started. So I can hit start submission. Uh, we can give a name to this. So this is not visible to the public. This is just our unique submission. We can determine if we want to release upon approval, add a contact email once it's approved. And we can also see that it's requiring me to do two different things here. I have to confirm my app sharing preferences and also agree to the Oculus developer distribution agreement. That should be pretty easy. Da, 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 da. Sure, why not? They can have all that and also this agreement. Yeah, I agree. Oh, let me read it really quick. There we go. And it looks like the contact email is actually not optional, so I'm going to add that. And right here, it says it's still looking for an attached binary. So if we go over to build, what it wants us to do is attach a binary. So we drop this down and that is the version I want to use for this. I'm going to save changes. Now, again, before we're allowed to submit, it is gonna say we need to complete all of the app metadata. And so that's gonna be this little tab over here. This is where we put the name, the description, what specs we have in for it, other details, publisher website, what assets we want. So this is what's gonna display inside of the game store. And then content rating to add a certificate. You just put your email address in here and then it'll allow you to add a certificate. Here, I'll give you an example. And so if I click add, it can I can request a new one and this is just the rating is your game violent is it not violent that's all that is and it'll just take you to a different web page to do that not too hard to do and then finally the pricing so i'm going to let you do all these on your own because i think they're pretty self-explanatory and if we come over to submissions there's one last thing now you'll see here that it says we are using record audio permissions and they don't like that unless we're actually using it in game so if you are using it for the game like say voice recognition to interact with different characters in your game then you would write that explanation here and they might approve it but if your game doesn't use anything like that and you try to submit it's likely going to get denied so how do we fix this we didn't even add this in here well the reason it's added is because in unity if there's any reference to record audio in any of the scripts then it is automatically going to add that to the android manifest when it constructs the android manifest when we build it and you have to be asking yourself well what added it and I'm gonna show you. So if we come in here, oddly enough, uh, the thing that adds it is the Oculus integration. So if I hit microphone, uh, let's see. You'll see these scripts here that come with the Oculus integration for microphone use. And this, since it's in the project, is gonna say, well, uh, you have a microphone, uh, we're going to ask for audio permission to record audio. So what's the solution if we don't need this, but the scripts are here? Well, we could look for every reference in this project from the Oculus integration and delete all the microphone scripts. But that seems a little clunky. Instead, I have a better solution that I worked out after many hours. And this is what it is. We're going to go over to the Android manifest. And these Android manifests aren't actually the end product. This is not what the manifest is. What the Android manifest is, is when you press build, it's gonna take a hodgepodge of these two things together, telling it what to do to build the manifest. And so the one we're looking for here is this one, which is called Android manifest, not this OVR submission. So I'm gonna double click here, and I'm going to highlight the things that I've added to it to fix this audio problem. So inside manifest, if you come all the way over here, I've added this little bit inside these brackets, and you wanna make sure that you add this to. So this XMLNS tools equals, well, you can read the rest. Now, the reason we need to reference the tools is because we need to add another line here, uses permissions, Android name, Android permission, record audio, and node remove. So essentially we're removing the node that asks for the permission to record audio. And so when this builds it up, it's gonna say, oh, we don't want that. And so it will no longer ask for that. And that should fix it. But to do that, we have to come over here again. We're gonna go into edit project settings. Now you have to think we're uploading a, another version or have to do another version. So I'm gonna come over here and I've done this a few times to fix this bug. And now I'm on version four up from two. And so if you were incrementing from two, you could go three and three, or I mean, honestly, do whatever you want. Since I'm doing this again for an example, I'll do five. There we go. And then I'm going to come over here, go again to build settings, hit build. I am going to decide to replace this one. 
Cool. And so once your newer version is done building again, you would just come in here, you would upload it again. It'll take a few minutes like before, but then we can hop back over to the website. And since version four was the one that worked for me last, I know I just built version five, but hey, we're doing examples here. So if I come over here, you'll see I have version four, which is the one that I finally got working correctly. And oh, my bad, got to save it first and come over to submissions. You'll see that warning's gone. So hooray. All I have to do now is add the metadata and I'd be able to submit it. And that is it. I know it was a long video, but I hope you learned a lot and liking and subscribing is the best way to support me at this time. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.